Do you want to know the secrets of the secondhand subculture? Everything about auctions, estate sales, appraisals, and downsizing? What about learning how to make some extra money in the resale world? Well, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to Why Don't You Want My Stuff, the podcast hosted by professional appraiser, auctioneer, and the host of YouTube's Last Week at the Auction, Josh Levine. Hey, everybody, it's Josh Levine, and this is Why Don't You Want My Stuff, my podcast about really about the secondary subculture and how to make a living buying and selling uh, and also downsizing and some psychology when people are getting rid of things. I deal a lot with that, but I've recently been trying to give, you know, I got another comment on a post uh, two days ago and it was a woman saying, stop making these. It's people like you that make it where I can't make a living buying and selling on the secondary market. I, you know, Everybody's out here doing it, and that's the point of my podcast. One is so everybody can make a little extra money, and two, to tell you about those things that people aren't looking for, so to give you a competitive edge. That's what I'm trying to do, and also, if you're cleaning out a house, not throw away stuff that's worth money. So today, I'm going to share with you another five, um, and uh, I got some interesting ones today, and I'm just going to jump right in. And uh, some of these I consider very broad, but they'll give you an example. The first one, I call it Christmas ornaments. A um, few years back, oh gosh, probably 15, <laughs> a few years back, uh, I, was, I was called to look at some antique furniture. The most typical call we get in the appraisal business is, hey, I got some old furniture I need to get rid of. And, you know, they think it's worth money, and typically it's not. Furniture's been pretty soft for years unless it's mid-mod, etc., and they had this, I pull up and there's a 30 yard dumpster in the, in the side of the property and it's raining and the house is cleaned out and all there is is antique furniture and very nice antique furniture, but 400, 600, 800, you know, that dollar range, nothing to sneeze at. But I was like, wow, what did you guys, you really cleaned out. What did you get rid of? And they said, oh, my grandmother collected holiday stuff and it's all this vintage Christmas stuff that nobody wants. And I just was like, that's in the dumpster. And they're like, yes. And I'm like, I'm like, can I go look in the dumpster? And they're like, it's pouring. I'm like, yeah, I know. I don't care. So I go in the dumpster and sure enough, they had uh, vintage Christmas ornaments, 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going to recover whatever we can out of this. So it, long story short, there was about $10,000 that I could recover. I really think there was fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. There were vintage Christmas ornaments. There were the old light bulbs that uh, some of this, the figural light bulbs from the 50s where the light bulb looks like a little Santa, a little, and you'll see these reproduced now. If you see a reproduction of these things at Target and Walmart during the season, you're looking for the original ones. Uh, some of these light bulbs today, three, four hundred dollars a piece. And when people have one, they usually have 20. So you can see what I'm talking about. Some of the old German glass um, indents, the old Christmas ornaments, some of the um, the oh, my gosh, what is it? The aluminum Christmas trees. And that's why I say when I say Christmas ornaments, I'm actually going to be as bold as to go in the Halloween. I just watched an auction uh, in in peoria this past weekend the folks at r r had a bunch of halloween when i say vintage now remember vintage is 15 20 years old so early 2000s way back in the day you know in the early 2000s and they had some of these uh uh, animated Christmas ornaments, uh, some of these things from uh, Christmas ornaments, Halloween ornaments from like Department 56, from Lee Max, and even the ones up in the 2007, 2008, 2013 were bringing four and five hundred dollars. So you got to look for this stuff. Vintage Halloween, just like Christmas, you're, the turn of the century stuff, the German stuff, it, it's that was what everybody wanted, but as people's nostalgia kicks in and they remember fondly what they remembered is uh, when they were children, it's starting to move into the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s. Now some of the Hong Kong stuff is worth, worth some money. So that's one to keep an eye out. And guess what? You'll see that at Goodwill. I always find vintage holiday stuff 
typically right after the holidays at the thrift stores, you have the holiday and you're like, you know, we're never going to use this again. And they put it away. Um, they put it out, you know, for donation thinking, no, it's not worth anything to anybody. So that's one to keep an eye out for next and making complete sense is I'm going to move into duck decoys. Okay. That sounds crazy, but duck decoys are out there. They're everywhere. You know, they're creeping around your house. Duck decoys, if you know what you're looking at, I, I know we have featured some on last week at the auction that have done over $100,000. There are million-dollar duck decoys. No, you're not going to find those every day of the week, but you will find two and $300 duck decoys. You're looking for the vintage wooden glass eye, you know, well-painted, you know, in the 90s, it there were a lot of folks making them again. Those will be worth money, too, someday. I don't want you to be a hoarder and keep all this stuff and put it away. But if you enjoy them, they're great decorators, and they're, they're going to appreciate. Because these are hand-carved, typically. These artists become listed artists over the years. Uh, people start to figure out, like, hey, that guy was a good carver. And that guy, you know, really had... It, it's... It's the names. You're looking for the same thing. And then when you get into the earlier pintails and drakes, there are people that are experts just on duck decoys. But again, if I see a cool old duck decoy at Goodwill for $9.95, buy it. What's the worst thing you do? Get your 10 bucks back, but you might have one that's several hundred dollars, which is what we're looking for. So duck decoys, again, there are experts in this field. I am I know enough to be dangerous. But I want you to keep an open mind. That's the whole point of this. And then next I'm going to go into, and this one is broad, fashion accessories. All right. Now that can cover, you know, I've talked before about costume jewelry and things like that. But I've made more money finding scarves. You can go through somebody's drawer and they they have scarves and they might have Hermé. And you don't, and people don't know that grandma paid $300 for that scarf you know, 40 years ago, and today it's now an eight to $1,200 scarf. So, and again, when people have one, they tend to have five, six, seven of these things. So, you know, it's look, keep an eye out for that. Purses and handbags, we know it's all in a name, but look, yes, there's a lot of forgeries and frauds out there. But again, when you're cleaning out a house or it's you're downsizing, you know, if your mom bought it at a reputable dealer or bought it at Neiman Marcus or whatever, ask these questions. Uh, eBay now offers a free authentication service. I could do a whole show about how, uh, how good at that process I think they are because. I don't think they're that good at the process. I think they just go, oh, you don't have the receipt in the original bag. But, you know, that's look for that stuff. The, all those fashion hair clips. There are things like this that people just don't think have any value and they do. Uh, what next? Guitar pedals. I love vintage guitar pedals. Now, what is that? Sound effects pedals. Now, in guitar pedals, I also classify anything that alters the sound of an, an input jack so this could be rack equipment as well this could be wah-wah pedals this could be uh eventide uh, harmonizers digitech rocktron if these don't make any sense to, if you don't know and again it's at a thrift store and an estate sale and it looks like some crazy old piece of electronic equipment just buy it there are tape echoes and tube uh, tube echoes and tube reverbs that are worth thousands of dollars. Their old synthesizers, again, might look like an effect unit. You know, it doesn't have a keyboard, but it has sliders and knobs. If vintage electronic like that, anything like that, big money, and it's out there. And again, people don't think it's worth anything unless they know. And you'll you can tell right away when they have it priced properly. I've gone to estate sales where I'm like, wow, they did their research. They knew. You'll see a little pedal in the in with the jewelry case, and they'll be like, that's four hundred dollars. And you're like, okay, they know what they're doing. But if you see five bucks, buy it. So look for that kind of stuff. And last today. I'm going to talk about, I was on a run making money in lamps, okay? I knew nothing about lamps. I just knew, hey, that's a mid-century lamp. That looks pretty cool. And today with Google Photos, it's pretty easy to research them. You take a photo. If anybody ever needs help with this, I, I should 
post this on my website how to do this. Um, most I've, I've seen people doing it at Goodwill, so I'm not the only one, where you snap the picture and then Google Photos has a thing where it'll identify it. It's very good for the mid-mod because if you can figure out the names of some of these di designers, like, you know, you'll have, you know, a lamp that was made for Ray Moore and Flanagan in the 60s. That's this mid mod, but they know the designer. Now you have a four or five hundred dollar lamp you're buying for nine dollars at at uh, Goodwill. One of the best tells for lamps are the cords. Look at the cords, the mid century cords. You can tell the you know they typically. I've been seeing a lot of great fake mid mod lamps recently, probably from IKEA because they're really good at making like cool mid century looking lamps that are brand new and probably were twenty bucks. But people will pay a premium for. The original so that's what you're looking for so the way I usually tell is by the lamp socket or by the cord itself that'll give it away and sometimes they're signed you know the lamp will be signed sometimes you still have the original sticker on the bottom that's always a plus but the art pottery lamps from the mid-century I was on a run where I don't know where they were cleaning these houses out for but it was in central Phoenix and I was finding these lamps that were on eBay I was getting three to five hundred dollars for them this is just a few months back three to five hundred dollars for them and they were ten dollars so lamps are a whole nother thing and again what's the worst thing you do pay ten bucks and and resell it for ten bucks I mean that's you know that's you're not going to lose, and it's a great education, and it's easy to research these with eBay, Live Auctioneers, WorthPoint. There are sites out there once you know the name, and if you don't know, again, look mid-century. That's really where you're going to make your money. We could One of these days, I'll get into like every Chinese lamp I find. I, I would buy and take them apart to get to the vase and just sell the vase with a hole in the bottom of it uh, because they were worth more money as a vase, but that's that's another day but today what strange collectible i have to give you a strange collectible of the week let me see what is strange uh oh i you know what this one you may know as far as a collectible barbie but did you know there are some barbie outfits out there that are worth twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars a piece what there's about three that they consider the holy grail but what i always look for any of the ones that were store exclusives in the 60s. So Woolworth had some store ex exclusives and Sears had some store exclusives. There's one, the, Google this, Barbie Roman Holiday original outfit. Google that and then learn more about Barbies. There's a great website, dollreference.com, where you can look up all of the fashions. If you find an old trunk of Barbies and the dolls themselves are like, you know, from the 60s, early 70s, go to that site and go through the clothing piece by piece. Yes, I'm not kidding, because it you will be surprised at some of the values you find. All right, this is Josh. This is Why Don't You Want My Stuff, podcast number whatever, and I will see you guys or talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to Why Don't You Want My Stuff with Josh Levine. If you're interested in learning more or becoming an expert, Please follow and support the show by rating us on your favorite podcast player. Engage with us. If you have ideas or questions, send an email to josh at joshlevinespeaks.com. Or you can visit www.joshlevinespeaks.com. We'd love to talk about your question on the show. This has been a T-Door production. Music by RKVC.